This is every plumbing part that you need to build a DIY cold plunge. There's a lot of riffraff online about what parts to use and how to configure them. So let's go through each part one by one and explain what's going on and how to use it. So whether you're in the planning stages of your first cold plunge or you've cobbled one together already, my goal is to equip you with some knowledge so you can either set yourself up for success or modify what you already have to avoid a messy, frustrating, possibly leaky, inefficient plumbing setup. I'm Joe with DIY Cold Plunge. Let's dive in. We'll start with pipes and hoses, and there's really only two that you'll need. The first is your standard hard PVC pipe. This is mainly used to join two fittings together using PVC primer and cement. And for the most part, you're gonna be using very small pieces. You'll measure the internal depth of the two fittings that you're joining together, and you'll cut it to that length. You can simply cut this with a saw, or what I prefer is to use a PVC cutter. And like I said, the hard PVC will be used in short increments because I don't recommend using this for long runs of plumbing. For the longer lengths, you're going to be using the flexible spa hose. This works the exact same way as the hard PVC, except for the fact that it's flexible, it won't kink, and in addition to bonding to PVC parts with PVC primer and cement, it can also be attached directly to the barbed venturi fitting that I have on my site. And using this on your longer lengths of plumbing eliminates the need for elbows and other joints in your system, which can greatly reduce the flow rate in your plumbing setup. And just a quick note, not all spa hose is created equal or even named correctly for that matter. There are many other versions on Amazon and other websites that are not nearly as flexible as what I carry on DIYcoldplunge.com. You can obviously shop wherever you want, but I've used a lot of different kinds of tubing and spa hose, and this is the only one that I use and recommend. And one other thing, don't get spa hose confused with vinyl tubing, the stuff that either comes in black, clear, or a braided clear. Those products will not bond with PVC primer and cement to the rest of your fittings. Now we'll move on to socket fittings. Every fitting that you see here uses a socket connection to attach a piece of PVC or spa hose to it. That means you'll be using PVC primer and cement to make the attachment. And I've got another video showing exactly how to do that, so make sure to check it out. It's really not that complicated, but there are some tips, tricks, and best practices that'll set you up for success. For now, we'll look at each fitting and what it does. Starting with the 90 degree and 45 degree socket elbows. These two are essentially the same, except one redirects water 90 degrees, and the other one redirects it 45 degrees. These are socket elbows, meaning that they are smooth on both inside openings, and each of these elbows that you add to your system affect the overall flow rate. So just make sure that you account for that when you're planning things out. Next up is the street elbow. This one is similar to the elbow that we just talked about, except for one inside opening is a smooth socket connection, meaning you can put PVC into it, but the other side actually fits into other socket fittings. And using this fitting can save you some space, and it also eliminates the need for a piece of PVC to join two fittings together. The street elbow can be used at the inlet or outlet of your plunge, or anywhere else that you wanna save a little space. The socket reducer. These come in a variety of sizes, and similar to the street elbow, one side is a socket connection and the other larger side is sized to fit into another socket fitting. Typically the threaded adapter which we'll talk about in a little bit. Next up is the socket PVC T. This one is smooth on all three inside openings and you'll use this fitting to branch water flow off in two different directions. If you do that just know that it will greatly reduce the overall water flow of your cold plunge. So make sure that you either use these with an intended purpose like in your filtration and sanitation system or just make sure that you plan your pump size accordingly to account for the loss of flow. Next is the socket ball valve and this one again is smooth on both inside openings where you can attach PVC and this allows you to add a shut off to your system and it's perfect if you want the ability to remove or service different parts of your cold plunge without draining your tub. Next up is the PVC Union, and this allows you to make a removable connection. They're a great addition if you want the ability to remove or service your pump, or at a chiller bypass if you need to remove your chiller in the winter, or if a chiller isn't in the budget and you don't wanna add it just yet. These, like all the other socket connections, are smooth on both inside openings, and when you unscrew it, you'll see this rubber gasket. Make sure you don't lose it because this is what makes the watertight seal. The PVC Union is an extremely powerful fitting to use, and I highly recommend implementing it into your plumbing. Next up is the PVC chiller fitting. This is a very specialized fitting. What this does is it converts your Active Aqua or Eco Plus chiller over to PVC without any hassle. These are plug and play. They attach directly to your chiller. The other side is a socket connection where you use PVC primer and cement to bond directly to spa hose. They're the newest product to DIYcoldplunge.com and the early reviews are awesome. Of course, you can always modify your existing chiller fittings. It's what I did for a long time. I've got this tutorial up on YouTube. But like I said, these are plug and play and they remove a lot of hassle from the process. 
The last socket fitting that we'll talk about is the three quarter inch coupling. This is a socket connection on both inside openings. And you'll basically use this if you cut a pipe too short and need to make a longer run of things. So that covers every single socket PVC fitting that you could possibly use in a cold plunge. And you'll wanna use these fittings and connections wherever possible because they are the least prone to leaking. But unfortunately, it's not possible to build a cold plunge with only socket connections. So let's move on to the threaded ones. Everything that you see here uses a threaded connection, which is much different than the socket connections we just covered. For these, you'll use thread sealant to assemble and attach things together. And again, I've got more on that in a separate video where I cover how to make thread connections. Every threaded fitting that we'll cover here has an NPT thread and all that stands for is National Pipe Tapered Thread. And what you'll want to pay attention to there is that you don't mix and match because not all pipe threads are compatible with each other. I've seen a lot of people try to combine these fittings with hose threads and things like that and the result is always the same. It's frustrating and you have leaks. So just make sure you're using NPT fittings. Your threaded fittings and parts will either have a male threaded side, which means that you can see the threads, or they'll have a female threaded side, which means the inside of the fitting or plumbing part is the part that has the threads. Let's dive into each part and take a look. First is the GE filter housing. This is the only filter housing that I use and recommend. I've got a link to it below. And this has three quarter inch female threads on both the in and out ports. Next up is the Danner pump and both the Danner 950 and 1200 will have a three quarter inch female thread on the in side and a three quarter inch male thread on the out side of the pump. Overall, my pump recommendation is the 950 should go with the quarter horsepower chillers and the 1200 should go with the half. You can reach out to me with any questions on a Danner pump. And if you're considering buying one, I'd appreciate your business at DIYcoldplunge.com. The first fitting that we'll talk about is the male threaded PVC fitting. This has male threads on one side and a socket connection on the other. And this fitting is really just used at the pump and at the filtration housing. The three quarter inch female fitting is basically the opposite of the one that we just covered. It has female threads on one internal side and a socket connection on the other. And the only time that you'll use this fitting is to attach the top of the Danner pump. Next up are your inlet and outlet fittings. I've got a whole tutorial on YouTube on exactly how to install these, but these fittings are what allow water to leave and re-enter your cold plunge. These have a threaded nut and rubber gasket that tighten together to help create a watertight seal on your tank. And once you have these installed and attached to your tub, the back side of these has one and a half inch female threads, which will attach to the next two fittings that we'll talk about. And those are the threaded elbow and threaded adapter. Depending on what plumbing plan you're using or how you're setting up your build, these will be the fittings that you use to reduce your inlets and outlets down to three quarters of an inch. They've got one and a half inch male threads that will attach to the back of your inlet and outlet fittings. And on the other side, there's the one and a half inch socket connection, which will connect to the reducer using PVC primer and cement that we showed earlier in the video. So why use one over the other? You'll use the elbow if you wanna keep all of your plumbing inside the enclosure. If you want the ability to adapt and modify your plumbing later on, you'll use the straight adapter. I feel like I'm getting long-winded, but now you've been schooled on every threaded connection that's possible. Here's the overall notes on threaded connections. Overall, no matter what, make sure that the threads that you use are compatible with each other. Otherwise, you're just asking for leaks. For all of these fittings, you'll use thread sealant to make the connection. Make sure to check out my tutorial on that if you need more information. And with that, we're on to our last fitting, the barbed venturi. This fitting, when installed and used correctly, is what allows ozone to enter your water to sanitize your cold plunge. This fitting will attach directly to your spa hose. All you'll do is warm this up in some hot water and basically wiggle it on to make the connection. Once you've done that, you can also secure it with hose clamps, although in most cases, it's probably not gonna be necessary. In the event that you have a slow leak from that connection, you can always warm up the spa hose with a heat gun or a hair dryer and use a hose clamp to tighten it down. I prefer the barbed version over the threaded because it eliminates a threaded connection and it uses less fittings overall to complete your build. That covers every fitting that you'll need to build a DIY cold plunge. And quick warning again, you're going to see a lot of debate and discussion online about what fittings or parts to use, what configuration to put them in. And really it's easy to get sucked into bad advice or just get confused about the process overall. If you'd prefer step-by-step -step guidance with video instructions showing exactly how to do this, DIYcoldplunge.com has proven plans with a track record of over two years and thousands of users. So head over to the site, check out the reviews. People are saying it saves them a ton of time, headache, and frustration. But ultimately, of course, you can figure out how to do all this stuff on your own. My hope is that this video helped explain some of these parts to help demystify the process because I know how overwhelming it can be looking at the plumbing aisle. If this was helpful, please hit the subscribe button below. I appreciate that more than you know. I'm Joe with DIY Cold Plunge. Thanks for watching.